Hi class. We're going to now actually do an example of using steepest descent to evaluate the asymptotic uh, form of, uh, of an integral expression. And the classic function to apply this to, which illustrates a lot of the things we've been talking about, is the Airy function. The Airy function is a function which satisfies this equation, d squared y by dx squared plus xy equals 0 uh, along the real axis. So y here is a function of x, so this is a, a second order linear differential equation. Uh, just a warning, sometimes people define, or often people will define the area function with a minus sign instead of a plus sign. That just flips what we mean by positive and negative x. Uh, this is the convention that I'm going to be using um, in my notes and in this vi these videos. Um, if you apply the method of Fourier transform, you can show that the area function, which is uh, given by, uh, is, is denoted ai, the area function has a, a Fourier representation which is of a form you've probably not seen before. The integral from minus infinity to plus infinity d omega over 2 pi of e to the i omega x minus omega cubed over 3. This omega x piece is the Fourier transform piece, and that says that the Fourier transform of the area function is actually e to the minus i omega cubed over 3. What we're going to uh, uh, compute in this video is the asymptotic form of the area function as x goes to plus infinity. So the first thing we need to understand is where's the Savile point in omega, right? We're, we, omega here is a, is a real value, x is a real value, um, but we're thinking about the behavior of the um, integral in the complex omega plane, moving from the real axis of omega to the complex axis. If we try to compute the Savile point, where does it that this, uh, this oscillatory function uh, has a stationary point, a critical point. We take a derivative with respect to omega, we find x minus omega squared is equal to 1, or omega is plus or minus the square root of x. So this corresponds to the uh, to what we found, say, in Stirling's formula when we were computing the asymptotic, evalu or evaluating the asymptotic expansion for the gamma function. This is a critical point which moves as a function of x. It's a movable saddle. But we can change variables. We can let omega equals the square root of x times omega tilde, a new variable omega tilde. If we write the area function in terms of this new variable omega tilde, the integral expression, we find the area function up to a square root of x, which comes from the change of variables, has the form of e to the i times something, x to the 3 halves in this case, which is going to get large as x goes to plus infinity, times a function of omega tilde uh, alone, omega tilde minus omega tilde cubed over 3. And the saddle points, not surprisingly, given the calculation above, the saddle points for this function, omega tilde minus omega tilde cubed over 3, occur at omega tilde equals plus or minus 1. So if we examine the behavior of the function um, of i, I'm going to include the i here, i times omega tilde minus omega tilde cubed over 3, its derivative vanishes when omega tilde equals plus or minus 1, and the second derivative is just minus 2i omega tilde, so at plus 1, that's equal to minus 2i, which if I write, write it in polar form, that's rho e to the i theta, where uh, theta at the, the argument theta at the um, saddle point plus 1 is actually minus pi over 2, because the phase is determined by the minus i. The second derivative at uh, minus 1 is given by plus i, the, the, the plus 2i, and so the argument is equal to pi over 2. So let's see what happens at omega tilde equals plus 1. We're doing expansion around omega tilde equals 1, so omega tilde minus 1 is s e to the i phi. If we plug into our Taylor series expansion for f of omega, well, the value of f at, equal, uh, at, uh, at uh, plus 1 is plus 2 three, 2 thirds i, and then I get 1 half the value of the second derivative, which we just computed as minus 2i times omega minus uh, tilde minus 1 squared, and then in general they're higher order terms, but in the usual way uh, that we compute these asymptotic expansions, we neglect the higher order terms. So this becomes minus i s squared e to the 2i phi. The minus i is just e to the, um, that should, there should be an i here, is just e to the minus i pi over 2. So I get plus 2 thirds i plus s squared times this uh, exponential, which I can write as cosine 2 phi minus pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 2 phi minus pi over 2. The steepest descent path is where this is minus 1 and that's equal to 0. So we have 2 phi minus pi over 2 is plus or minus pi or phi is plus 3 pi over 4, or minus pi over 4. Uh, that's the direction through which we have to go to the saddle at omega tilde equals plus 1 in order to um, 
use the method of steepest descent. We do the same analysis at omega tilde equals minus one, do a similar expansion. Here's the value of f tilde at minus one. Uh, for the second derivative term in the Taylor series expansion, you get one half. The second derivative is two i instead of minus two i. You get the um, uh, omega tilde plus one quantity squared, which we've written as s squared times e to the two i phi. I remember phi again determines the direction we're going through the saddle. S determines how far we are away from the critical point minus one. Um, in order for, so this becomes e to the 2 phi plus pi over 2. So the steepest descent path is, uh, for this case, is 2 phi plus pi over 2 is mi plus or minus pi, which is phi equals uh, pi over 4 or minus 3 pi over 4. So if we look at this in the omega tilde plane, here's the critical point at minus 1, here's the critical point at plus 1. If we go in the direction of plus pi over 4 around minus 1, here is the direction that we go in the plus, uh, around minus 1. If we were to go instead in the minus 3 pi over 4 direction, we go in the opposite direction. At plus 1, if we go in the minus pi over 4 direction, we, you see it here in the purple, that's the direction we would go. If we were instead to go in the 3 pi over 4 direction, it would be the opposite of that. But the contour C that we start with comes in along the x-axis and goes out along the x-axis. If we're going to deform this, what this means is there's a saddle right here at minus 1. There's a ridge. There's a ridge I want to avoid in the other direction. Similarly here, there's a ridge I need to avoid uh, perpendicular to the direction of steepest descent. So clearly, what I have to do is modify my contour to a contour C prime, which goes through the saddle at minus 1 in the plus pi over 4 direction, avoiding the ridges on either side. And it comes uh, through the saddle point at plus 1, avoiding the ridges here in the direction minus pi over 4. So notice in this case, the real part of f at uh, the both critical points is 0. So both critical points actually give contributions, as we'll see directly, that are the same order of magnitude. So I actually have to, uh, I have to check that I can modify the contour to go through both critical points in this case. Now we do sort of the standard thing, just generalized to the complex plane that we've done several times. Near omega tilde equals plus 1. Uh, the square root of x over 2 pi was there before. The integral from minus infinity to infinity. Um, here's the, um, the, the exponential uh, that we have uh, uh, now expanded into the function of s. Omega tilde minus 1 is s e to the minus i pi over 4. So when I do the change of variable from omega tilde to s, I pick up a, a phase factor of e to the minus i pi over 4. So this approximation near the saddle point at plus 1 is the square root of x over 2 pi e to the 2 thirds i uh, x to the 3 halves e to the minus i pi over 4. And in the usual way, I assume that if what I'm interested in is the contribution just very close to the saddle point, that as x goes to infinity, I can actually extend that integral from minus infinity to plus infinity to get uh, an approximation for the actual value uh, of the, at the critical point, and that gives me a square root of pi over x to the 3 halves. So the contribution from this saddle is the combination of these things plus this thing. I can do exactly the same thing at omega tilde equals minus 1. I get the same overall prefactor. Here is the expansion of the function, just keeping the quadratic terms. Here, remember, I have to go in the plus uh, pi over 4 direction, so do d omega tilde is e to the plus i pi over 4 uh, ds. So the, the leading term is here from this term in the exponential, here from the change of variables. And then what I'm left with is a Gaussian integral e to the x to the 3 halves minus s squared which if I do the Gaussian integral, again, in the usual way where we approximate going over the saddle as an infinite Gaussian integral, I get a, the same factor, uh, square root of pi over x to the 3 halves. So if I put all of that together, my contribution to the area function as uh, x goes to infinity, this is the asymptotic expansion as x goes to infinity, here's the contribution from, um, from plus 1, here's the contribution from minus 1, and, I, and the overall prefactors are the same. When I put them together, I find that the asymptotic expansion for the area function as x goes to plus infinity has an overall prefactor of 1 over the square root of pi. I can rewrite these exponentials as a cosine. The overall amplitude goes like 1 over x to the 1 quarter. And then I have a cosine of 2 thirds x to the 3 halves minus pi over 4. 
Notice that the asymptotic expansion has given me the overall prefactor, it's given me the behavior of the function, the, the, modu the overall amplitude, plus the way the phase changes, including an overall phase shift of pi over 4. Next, we'll, we'll consider what happens as we take x to minus infinity.